When it comes to data recovery, Gyrosoft has you covered. From SD cards to hard drives, from PDFs to JPEGs, no matter what you've lost, they can help you get it back. What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and we've been checking out a number of cheap SSDs recently and we also too checked out this guy right here which was relatively really cheap. However, today we're here with something even cheaper, the cheapest drive I could actually get on the internet which is a $5 SSD. What exactly can we get for $5 off the internet? and what will even show up? Well, actually something did show up and in this case we're taking a look at the VASKEY V800, a drive that I picked up for just $5.99 with free shipping off Amazon Prime and man, I cannot wait to get inside of this drive. Now, I do want to point out that the, yes, this drive was part of a discount, however, a $5 drive can't really be that much more expensive on day-to-day -day retail pricing, so that's definitely really interesting and I just really wanted to know what you get for a 599 SSD. Now that being said, uh, this also too is being bought to you by MagiDeal. Yep, the same seller that went ahead and sold me a blank hard drive that we ended up recovering someone's entire computer's worth of data off and found out who they were, most likely where they were, and basically everything about them. So. If that's not dodgy, I'm not sure what is. Either way though, this drive was on a sale as I did mention, however, I don't think the actual original price is really that much more expensive, or maybe it was just an error on the Amazon side. Either way, as we can see by this screenshot, again, it only cost me $5.99. So let's go ahead and take a look at Vasky themselves, or Vasky, we don't really know how to pronounce it. Either way, uh, it actually doesn't seem too bad, I mean, their website has an English option and uh, the V800 seems to be their headlining product, which is not too bad actually. And hey, we can't really argue with faster, stronger, quality, mute? Okay, maybe we can make an argument with some of their headlines, but either way, going ahead and looking at the actual product page, no, we can't actually. So it turns out uh, the links that are on the website don't link to anywhere. You can like click on it all day, but nothing actually loads up. So if we go ahead and take a look at the box for some details about what we might actually see in this drive, it actually doesn't look too bad. We see that it is a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second drive with MLC flash and wow, even has a DRAM cache, not too shabby. And now this is actually interesting that they put this down as much more expensive SSDs don't even have a DRAM chipset on them, meaning, yeah, this is actually pretty nice. Though, that being said, calling it a DRAM cache is a little bit misleading because the way DRAM usually works on these SSDs is it stores the mapping type data to go ahead and make the drive perform faster. Rather than caching files to it, it just stores where those files are, uh, sort of like an indexing or kind of like a page file. Again, that is a whole nother subject. Now, on top of this, we also do get claims for the fastest read and write speed of we don't know what, and also to your standard claims for low power consumption, less noise, and those types of things. So all in all, pretty standard, also to some pretty decent claims but it's only $5.99. So onto the actual drive itself, we are looking at an all metal build with a printed, a screen printed rather VASCI branding on it and all in all a sticker on the back and not too shabby here. I mean, the design is much worth more than what the actual $5 price might suggest. So I have a feeling that this particular guy might actually retail for more than $5 and it may have just been an error that I got it for $5. Either way, I'm not complaining here. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at this drive actually looking inside of this guy, well, I was expecting some better internals. Now, yes, we are looking at what appears to be Micron Flash, but it looks to be more TLC rather than MLC. So that's interesting, I guess. And um, another really interesting thing here is the screw that holds the PCB in place is missing. There's three screws out of the four screw holes, and yes, I've seen uh, other manufacturers do two screws, so one on each uh, diagonal side to obviously hold the thing together, uh, but it's odd to see three out of four. Either way, another big sort of major O factor with this particular drive, other than sure the flash being made by Micron, but not really what it's been marked, is the fact that there's actually no DRAM. Surprise to probably nobody who saw the actual price tag, yeah, it doesn't have DRAM on this particular drive. 
I guess, oh well. But I guess just touching on the internals that it does have, it is backed up with Micron Flash, which is something that I'm definitely getting really thumbs up from me. Um, it has a little Micron Swoopy logo, though I can't confirm whether it is or isn't Micron because I put that model number into the Micron Flash Finder and nothing actually came up. However, when I did a Google search of that, a lot of Micron links came up. So I'm guessing it's from Micron, but uh, do check that description box because it may turn out not to be Micron and I may just be totally wrong. Controller wise, we're looking at the Silicon Motion SM2258 XT, which is pretty standard for most SSDs on the market here today. XT controller here is gonna give us pretty decent performance and paired up with some Micron memory. It should in theory be not too bad though. What was said on the box and what we found isn't the same, so maybe we're not too sure about performance. Either way, looking at Crystal Disk Info, we find no extra hours run. We find the general array of sensors and the temperature sensor, which seems to be fixed in at a certain temperature. I guess, oh well, right there. And then once we get into our performance numbers, Crystal Disk Mark, we find... Ooh, not so great. Numbers with 381 by 272. Things aren't looking so flash hot for the performance front, which is really, really interesting because of the fact it's using a Silicon Motion SM2258 XT controller and pretty decent enough flash. I don't know what they've done with it, and it seems to be on the software side where things are failing or the firmware side because the hardware is matched by a lot of other SSDs on the market that get, in some cases, even double in the uh, rights department than what we got here today, which was a little bit upsetting. This is also too backed up by HD Tune and also to Atto and Windows file transfers were kind of also to a bit of a disaster with claim speeds higher than what the synthetics could get on the first run but then when we ran it a second time things were much slower so I don't know what's going on here. All in all, the Windows transfers was weird, but when it came to loading up video games, they were pretty much on point for a 64 gigabyte drive. And when it came to things like FPS, again, not really too affected by the actual storage medium. That being said, going ahead and taking a look at some of our other tests that we do run and also to our day-to-day -day operations, we're pretty much fine. Um, though that being said, it is a 64 gigabyte drive, so installing Windows on this thing kind of left no room on the actual drive itself. Uh, but was totally possible. And looking at our unscientific dodginess, Graphit does score a 5 out of 10, 1 being not dodgy at all, and 10 being the most dodgiest drive that we've ever checked out. Thanks to the fact that the internals are made by what I'm guessing is Micron and also do Silicon Motion. However, the reason why it scores so high in the dodginess is because I don't know why it is so slow. The hardware itself should in theory be fine, but it seems to be something along the way that's sort of a problem. And also too, the website's kind of sketchy, the support's kind of sketchy, and kind of is a little bit of a letdown, unfortunately. So that then brings us to the question of should you buy one? And the answer is, well, probably yes, but if you're gonna be using it, also too, probably no. Don't get me wrong, a $5 SSD is very hard to argue with, and honestly, if the sale was still going at the moment at the time of recording, I'd probably pick up like another 10 of them because it is so great to have such low-cost drives um, for actually decently enough performing for a $5 drive. And this is where I also do get really conflicted with this particular question. When it comes to the question of should you buy one, I want to compare this SSD to other SSDs that we've checked out. However, because it's only $5, the price tag would suggest that it should be compared with other $5 drives. And well, if you've ever been on the internet and taken a look at $5 drives, they're really not that much chop, which is kind of interesting to see. And that is that really hard place. I guess the question can be split up into two parts. Should you buy one if you're looking for an SSD? Well, the answer is probably not. It's a $5 SSD. However, if you want to buy one and you're looking for just cheap storage in general, hey, absolutely yes. 64 gigabytes of storage for $5 and pretty decent performance with decent flash and a decent controller. It's really hard to go wrong with this particular drive. And again, is a very conflicting kind of question right here. And the price wise should really have us comparing it to other flash drives rather than SSDs, but seeing that it's an SSD, we're still gonna compare it to SSD. And that, I guess, then brings us to the TLDW part of this video. The Vasky V800 is a rather odd drive. Because of the fact it is a full-size SSD with real SSD internals, it makes me wanna compare it to other SSDs on the market. But the fact that it only comes in with a $5 price tag wants me to go ahead and actually compare it to other $5 flash drives from the internet. The Silicon Motion SM22 58 XT controller and Micron Flash is a really good pairing up right here. 
However, the performance department, as we can see on the screen right now, isn't so great. It seems to be for some odd reason losing out in the software department where things really do fall off a cliff because we do know for a fact checking out other SSDs that feature very similar components that in theory we should be getting some really decent numbers up near the 400 megabyte per second sequential speeds. And looking at the rest of our test once again it seems to be backing up those unfortunate numbers and really puts me in a hard place because of today compared it to other SSDs but for a $5 drive, this thing would be an absolute epic deal. Again, part of me wants to compare this to other SSDs and the other part of me wants to compare it to other flash drives. But I guess, let me know down in that comment section, what do you think? Should this thing be really compared to other $5 flash drives or should I be comparing it to other SSDs? Because, well, it is an SSD. If you want to go ahead and pick one up, I'll leave the link that I bought from down in that description box. I don't think it's on a sale at the time of releasing this video, but hey, keep your eyes on it you may get a wicked $5 SSD. So again, linked down below. Guys, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.